Hey everyone, welcome back to Hard to Hear It. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wanted to hop on and quickly make this video because I was feeling inspired by a bunch of my followers. And so I didn't get ready. I just kind of figured I'd turn the camera on right now. This is what I look like today. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about confidence and our emotions when it comes to our hearing loss and you know anxiety and depression and I just I want to talk about all those things today with you so where to even begin because everyone's own hearing loss journey is very personal um, and everyone experiences it experiences it very differently so I don't want anyone to get a skewed view of hearing loss because I'm sharing just my experience and my journey. Um, but I would love to know all of your journeys and your experiences. So please feel free to comment below or send me a private message if you don't want it to be seen by everyone. I love hearing other people's stories. I'm happy to be someone to listen. You know, it's really important to find people um, in the hearing loss community because they get it, you know, we get it, we understand each other. Um, and that's why I'm a strong believer in joining support groups. I'm in three different groups, I think on Facebook. One is um, just a general hearing loss community. And then I'm in two different ones specifically for otosclerosis. And I, I just, I'm such a big, big, big supporter in support groups. And if you're not in any, I will put uh, the links below on how to join them because the more people you have that understand you, the easier it is to kind of cope with. I will say that even though I might come off confident, you know, I started this channel, I have an Instagram, ooh, uh, I still have bad days. And I think people really need to understand that going through life with hearing loss or not, it's never going to be perfect. And you really, really just need to take it one day at a time. And you know, some days my hearing aids are not performing and I have really, really, really shitty days, you know, and I cry. I just want to sleep and not think about it. And that's okay. You need to kind of almost like respect those days and let them happen because there's no sense in keeping everything bottled up. And I've mentioned before, you know, the reason I started this channel and I started my Instagram was a way to cope and a way to find like-minded people and a way to spread awareness because not enough people outside of the hearing loss and deaf community understand hearing loss. I feel like because it's one of those invisible disabilities, people often don't believe you. Um, and so I just really hope that with this channel, I can shed some light on the hearing loss community and you know, change the way people talk about it and view it. About two years ago was when I really started to advocate for myself and to really um, start talking openly about my hearing loss and my hearing aids. And I actually wrote um, a children's book um, as a creative outlet and as a way for myself to kind of cope with my hearing loss and to try and start conversations between parents and their kids about people with disabilities. Um, and it's, it's a quick little easy read with some coloring pages in the back. I know, it's wonderful. Um, and I just, I really hope from my channel and my Instagram and, you know, my book that people just start talking more. I feel like people are so worried these days to, you know, hurt people's feelings or to offend people. And I'm sorry, but you just got to get over that. You have to... In order for us to learn and to grow, you have to ask the hard questions and you have to have the hard conversations. And so if people don't know about hearing loss, you know, they can always learn. And unfortunately, there will always be ignorant people in this world and there will always be people who are entitled and think they're better than you. And those are the kind of people you don't want to be around anyway. So find the people who are willing to put in the work and who are willing to try um, and to learn. And don't be afraid to have those conversations as uncomfortable as they might be. Um, you know, many times I've had conversations where I'll just start crying because I'm uncomfortable or whatever, but that doesn't mean that conversation shouldn't happen. Um, you need to 
talk through things in order to move forward and to gain that confidence that you're trying to find. Um, but yes, back to my little book, you know, if you want to purchase it, I'll put a, a link below. Um, but personally, I think it's great for all ages. Um, but that's just me. I might be a little biased. Uh, but yeah, um, I just wanted to add that there and find, find things that help you feel confident, you know, um, and it doesn't have to be specifically about hearing loss or your hearing devices, like find something that makes you feel confident and you'll find confidence in other areas of your life. Um, you know, you, again, you just have to kind of try and see what works and that's all you can do. You just have to try. Don't be afraid to try because if you don't try, then you'll never know. And that sounds really cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> Another thing I started doing about two years ago is just really owning it. You know, I am hard of hearing. When I meet someone new, it's probably the first thing that comes out of my mouth. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm hard of hearing. I point to my hearing aids. I'm like, these are my uh, hearing aids. So, you know, if you're talking to me and I have to ask you to repeat yourself, that's why. I find that getting it out of the way increases my confidence because if I don't tell them up front and then there is a situation where I can't hear them or they've turned their back or something, I feel like, I don't even know, I, like it just, I feel worse. So I like to get it out of the way right up front and if they have a problem with it, you know, I'll leave the conversation. You know, these people unfortunately do exist. People who don't, you know, um, accommodate people with hard of hearing or people who are deaf, um, it sucks. Some people do suck, that's life. And if you let those people bother you, you know, you will have a shitty experience, unfortunately. So I try really, really hard to not let those people bother me. I brush it off. You know, I don't interact with them. If they're gonna be like that, they don't deserve my time if they're not gonna respect me. Um, and I think that's a big thing is respecting is being respected. Uh, again, with hearing loss, it's different for everyone and people need different types of accommodations. And if people don't respect you, they're not the kind of people you wanna be around anyway. Um, and one thing too, I, I've, I kind of have come to realize the longer I have hearing, I've had my hearing loss is that there is this large grief process, at least for me there was, where there were moments of Am I ever going to remember what something hears, sounds like? So, um, because, you know, hearing aids don't always pick up everything. They're not perfect. They're not a cure. They're just there to help you hear better. And I think that's another thing people forget is that hearing aids are not a cure. They're literally just a device to help you hear better. Because as soon as these come out, I don't hear anything. So, I mean, without them... I still can't hear. <laughs> um, so I, I think it, understanding that there is a grief process, again, at least there was for me, there might not be for you, and respecting those levels of grief. You know, you start to not, you start in the denial period, which I 100% did for the first year. I refused to wear my hearing aid. I made up so many dumb excuses as to why I did not need to wear it. Um, there's the anger period. You know, there's all that, the, the different steps of grief and I 100% feel like I went through all of them and I'm finally in the acceptance stage and I'm just owning it because it is part of who I am and if I try to hide that it I guess diminishes who I am and I don't want that I want to just be me um and again it's not that simple it's a lot easier to say than to do but the more you talk about your hearing loss and talk about your hearing devices, I have found that it has made my life easier. And, you know, again, it's not for everyone. Not everyone uh, feels that comfortable, but the more you can talk about it, I feel like the more you own it, it just, it just becomes, you know, part of your routine and part of everything. And it's almost non-existent anymore when you, when people just, it's part of, you know, your daily everything. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think, at least for me, 
just straight up owning it and not trying to hide it has really helped my confidence. It's helped me cope with it. And just remembering that you will always have bad days, unfortunately, no matter what, you are going to have bad days. So by accepting that now and just kind of figuring out how to make those bad days a bit better, you know, it'll just, it'll continue to get easy. It'll continue to get easier. And um, like I said before, if you ever need to message me or write a comment or anything just to help yourself cope, please do. I think it's really important to, to talk to people you feel comfortable with. And that's why, again, I suggest joining a support group because you'll find so many people who are going through the exact same things as you and it feels so comforting to know that you're not the only one. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, really know what else to say because again, everyone's experience is so different, but I hate to say it, it is what it is, you know? So you just have to find what works for you and you know, uh, talking about it right away has, is what's worked for me. Thanks again for tuning in and thank you so much for all of your support on my YouTube channel and on Instagram. I very much appreciate it. Uh, so I will see you all next week. Bye now.